All right, so today we're gonna look at Shopify functions a bit. Uh, gonna learn about what they are, why they're useful, and we're also gonna build a small function ourselves to validate the cart. What we're building today is a quantity limit function. So very useful for things like flash sales or limited sales where you only want a certain number of products to be ordered per customer. You can limit that. So for example, on this product, we've got a limit of three. So if I try to order more than three, it gives me an error and won't let me order more. This is gonna be set directly through the meta fields on the product. So this is the product. We scroll down to the meta fields. We, ha we added this quantity limit meta field and you can click on that and adjust it. So now we set it to five and it is instant. It works instantly. So now I go up to five, try to order more, still get the error. So that's what we're gonna be building today and it'll be really neat, really useful and you can kind of see the power of functions and how it can replace sometimes entire apps. And especially if you only need a certain functionality for your store, you'll be able to add it pretty easily. So if you haven't used Shopify functions before, it's basically a way for you to hook into the backend logic of Shopify, similar to how scripts uh, worked previously that they've now deprecated it. But for example, this quantity uh, limit validation that we just ran, this actual update of quantity happens on Shopify servers. So with our function, we're able to just inject code into that and allow the user to actually update the quantity or block it based on whatever custom logic we throw in there. There's a lot of ways you can use functions. The cart and checkout validations is just one portion of it. There's also discounts. Uh, you can create bundles, custom bundles, uh, payment delivery customizations. So there's a lot more you can do with it. Uh, what we're looking at today is just the cart validations. The quickest way to get started with functions is by going to the terminal and going to the folder where you want the project to live and then typing npm init at Shopify slash app at latest. And this will scaffold a project for us. It's gonna ask us a couple questions. Um, and on this question, you don't wanna start with Remix since we don't actually need any admin app code. We're just focusing on the extension or the function portion of it. So click on uh, start by adding your first extension. And this will just set up the project, a pretty minimal project for us to get started with. We'll go into that project and we're gonna open it up in VS Code. You can see there's pretty much nothing in here except some config files. We do have an extensions folder, but there's nothing in it. So the first thing we need to do is generate an extension and it's gonna throw it into that extensions folder for us. So in the terminal, we're gonna run npm run Shopify app generate extension. And then we can select um, everything, all the settings and everything for it. And when it asks you what type of extension you wanna generate, you wanna scroll down until you see the cart and checkout validation. You'll click enter on that, give it the default name. We're gonna do JavaScript. And you can see it added that folder to our extensions folder. So now that this finished, we have our completed cart checkout validation folder. Uh, it has all our config in it. And then the source folder, which is where the actual code lives and the actual function itself is in run.js. The default function here is just limiting the quantity of any of the line items to one. So we're gonna just expand on this a little bit today and then allow you know, a, a user to find limit to be put in here instead of the static one that's in here right now. And the function return value is, as you can see here, an errors array and each error just has the target, which is the cart, and then the message uh, that's what's displayed underneath, um, in this case, when you're trying to increase a quantity or add something to cart, this is the error that will display for the user. Apart from this function code here, the other very important part of a function is the run.graphql. Um, this just defines the input that's passed to our function. So you can look at all the different types of input that you have available to you, in shopify.dev and this one you can see it's just grabbing the cart it's grabbing the lines in the cart and then grabbing the quantity for each line we're going to be updating this to also in addition to the quantity give us the meta fields on each line item product so we can grab the quantity limit value from there at this point we're going to want to pull up the shopify.dev docs for functions uh, so we can take a look at the api 
which will tell us all of the available inputs and how to structure them and basically get us the data that we need. Okay, so on this function APIs page, if you scroll down until you see the cart and checkout validation API, we're gonna click on that and then click on the validation API reference. And this one on the left-hand side will tell you kind of all the objects available to us and input is the one that we're interested in. So let's click input. And this input object is the one that we're using for our cart validation function. So if we go back to that run.graphql file, you can see we have the run input, which in this case is, is of type input. Um, we have the cart, the lines, quantity, and coming back to the API, we see we do have that cart um, property available here. And if we click on the cart, then it'll show us what's available on the cart object. And we have our lines, which is an array of cart lines. And then clicking into that, we see the quantity um, attribute, which is what we're grabbing over here in our input. So we can use this API to kind of figure out what properties we need and then build our schema. Uh, and then that will make all of that data, whatever we put in the schema available to us uh, in this input parameter of our function. So configuring our GraphQL file is probably the best place to start here. Uh, we already know that we do need the quantity for each line, but we also will need the meta field that we define for each product as well. So if we come back to the API and go all the way up to the top to the input, um, then we can drill back down into the cart. So we already have the cart. And then we don't need anything else on the cart object except for the lines. So again, let's just go back into the cart line. Okay, so here we have the quantity, which we're already getting. And then we also want to grab the merchandise, which is the, the product. Um, so the merchandise can be one of two products or types. It could be the custom product or the product variant. Product variant is what we're looking at, so let's click into that. And then here, it gives us a few things. There is a meta field property on the product variant, but what we actually wanna do is drill into the product of the variant and grab the meta field from the main product. Um, so by clicking on this main product, there is a meta field property on that one as well. So that's the one we're actually gonna need, not the meta field from the product variant. So now that we know kind of the structure that we need to build out, we can go into our GraphQL file and build out what we need. So now to update our GraphQL file, we can come in here and we already want the quantity. So just right after that, we're gonna also grab the merchandise. And since the merchandise can be one of two possible types, the custom product or the product variant, we have to specify that we want it to be only for the product variant. So how we do that is we do dot dot or underscore underscore type name. Then we do dot 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 on product variant, which lets us now specify the types only on the product variant. So on the product variant, we're gonna grab the product. And then on the product, we're gonna grab that meta field. Uh, we need to specify the namespace, which we'll just call quantity limits. And then the key will be limit. And from that meta field, we just want the value. Okay, so that's all we need to do to update our run input. Um, and again, this will just make all of this available to us in our run.js file. So now anytime we make an update to our run.graphql file, we have to run a command to generate the schema from our changes, from our run input. And it'll basically spit it out to the schema.graphql file. Um, so if we come into the terminal and you want to CD into the extensions directory and then go into our function directory and then we can run NPM run Shopify app generate schema. It's a long one. And then you have to connect it to an existing app. We'll select our app and there we go. So this GraphQL schema was updated now based on our changes to the run input. And now everything is available to us uh, in our run.js file. So we can access the merchandise now and grab the meta fields from there. Um, let's go ahead and run our app though first to get it installed. And then 
we'll uh, we'll take a look at the partners dashboard and see some of the logs and stuff that they give us for viewing functions. So in the, we actually need to go back to the main directory for our app and then we're gonna run npm run dev. Okay, so now this is running. We can press P from our terminal to open it up in our store and install the app. So we'll click install. And it just takes us to settings since we don't have a, an admin app portion for it, it's just the function. Um, and then there's one other thing we need to do to enable this. If you go to the checkout page under settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and then you'll see this checkout rules section. You wanna click add rule, and then you can see our app shows up. It shows our function, the cart checkout validation. We'll click on that. We'll click save, and then we can turn it on. Okay, so now it's actually running, and it's gonna run every time in our cart. Um, so we can actually see that in action. If we open up the store, let's click on a product and click add to cart. Okay. Great, and if we go to the cart, and if we try to order more than one, that default function that doesn't let us get more than one is running, and it blocks the add to cart function. Um, you can also see what it's doing if you go to your partner dashboard and open up the app. And on the left-hand side, click on extensions, and you'll see our function here. We'll click on the function. And then at the bottom of this page, it'll show us all of the runs that this function has done. Um, so if we click on that first one, then we can see that there was no error and it let us add it to the cart just fine. And the input, it tells us the input too, and we can see that our merchandise um, is coming through correctly. There's no meta field value set, so that's why it's null, but it's coming through and we can verify that. Then if we go back and look at the latest run, then it did return an error because we tried to add more than one and it threw the error and blocked the cart progress. So this is really great for uh, debugging, making sure your function's working all right, making sure the input's coming through correctly. Now let's go back to our store. Let's go to a product and we're gonna add that meta field. So if you scroll down to the meta fields, we can view all, uh, we can click view definitions. You can also get to it through settings, um, but you wanna come here and click add definition and then let's give it a name. Let's just call it quantity limit. And then here is where that namespace and key that we set in our schema is gonna come into play. So for the namespace, we put quantity limits. So back in our meta field definition, uh, we'll use quantity limits for the namespace. And then we used the limit for the key. So we'll come here and set that. So now our namespace and key is set correctly. So uh, we'll be grabbing this meta field from our run input. Uh, let's select the type and let's just do an integer and let's have a minimum value of at least one and then no maximum value and we'll save that. Cool, okay, so now we have the meta field definition. So if we go to our product, this is on our product right here, the 3P fulfilled snowboard and under meta fields, we see our quantity limit now. So I'm gonna set it, let's just set it to like four for now and save that. And if we go back to the car, it still won't let us do anything because we never updated the function code. So it's still capping it at the one quantity. But now if I come back to the partner's dashboard and refresh that page, we can see this latest run. And we can see that in the input, we do get the value of four coming through that we set on the meta field. So, um, and of course the error output. So again, this is really neat to kind of double check that the input's coming through exactly how you expect it to. And it'll help for debugging if we run into any issues um, when we're actually updating the function code. Okay, we have our function set up, we have the meta field set up on the products. And now all we have to do is update this run.js file to actually use that meta field and update the errors if it's greater than whatever the meta field value coming in. What the default code is doing right now is just grabbing the cart line items, filtering them out if they're greater than quantity of one, and then it's returning an error if so. So what we need to do is just adjust this filter code to instead of looking to see if the quantity is greater than one, 
we want to see if the quantity is greater than the user defined meta field. Um, so let's get rid of this. And we know that from our schema, we have the quantity and the merchandise available to us. So we can also pull in the merchandise there. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the merchandise is of type product variant because that's what we're, uh, we put in our schema. So we'll just do if merchandise dot underscore underscore type name is equal to product variant. And now we can run the rest of our logic knowing that we're safely on the product variant. Um, first, let's go ahead and grab the limit, which is defined on merchandise dot product. And it's the meta field on that product. And then we're going to grab the value um, and that'll give us a limit. And then if the limit exists, then we're going to just do the comparison of is quantity greater than limit. And let's actually cast this to a number since it comes through as a string. And if it is, then we're going to return true, otherwise false. And we can actually just return this condition. So scrap that and we're just going to return this and that'll return either true or false and give us what we need. So just to recap, we're bringing in the quantity and the merchandise for each line item. If uh, it's a product variant, then we're going to get the limit from the meta field of the product. And then we do the comparison of is the quantity greater than the limit defined in the meta field. And if so, return true or false. If it returns true, then it'll spit out an error and it'll block the cart progress. So let's save this and then we can go ahead and test it since it immediately updates. So let's come back to our store. Um, we can go ahead and start increasing the quantity and I think we're still at four. So the quantity limit right now is set to four from that meta field. And if we try to go past four, we'll get an error. Let's add another product that doesn't have the meta field. So you can see how that works. So now this one, we can increase the quantity as high as we want because there's no limits on it. And then again, this one has that limit of four and it's pretty instant, the updates. Since everything is coming from the Shopify function and the meta field, it's, uh, it happens very quickly. So we just updated that to six and now we can update our cart up to that new limit. And that's really all that we need to do to set up our function. Um, we can deploy this now so that it can actually be live because right now it's running off our development. But um, that is, in a nutshell, that's how the functions work. That's how you can hook into the logic. And in this case, that's how you can run a very simple quantity limit validation um, all through meta fields. I'm gonna have a repo up with this finished code so you can check that out. I encourage you to go through that, kind of play around with it and see what else you can do um, with the cart and checkout validations because there's a lot you can do. Uh, also check out the other functions. I do wanna make some videos going over the other Shopify functions available like the discounts and uh, custom bundling since those are super useful, they have a lot of use cases. So let me know in the comments what you wanna see and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.